effects of harvesting marine mammals. It is, mostly, it is most commonly made out of the bones, muscle, and teeth of sperm whales, the baleen, or it, this should be, or other whales, and the tusks of walruses. The making of scrimshaw began on whaling ships between 1745 and 1759 on the Pacific Ocean and survived until the ban on commercial whaling. A maker of scrimshaw is known as a scrimshander. Scrimshaw essentially was a leisure activity for whalers. What is a leisure activity? It's a free time hobby sort of activity. Because of the work of whaling was very dangerous at the best of times, whalers were unable to work at night. This gave them a great deal more free time than other sailors. A lot of scrimshaw was never signed and a great many of the pieces are anonymous. That means unknown. Early scrimshaw was done with crude sailing needles and the movement of the ship as well as the skill of the artist produced drawings of varying levels of detail and artistry. You have to remember while they were carving into these, the ship is rocking back and forth the whole time. Originally, candle black soot or tobacco juice would have been used to bring the etched design into view. Though there are other sources of ivory that are sanctioned and legal, poachers in Africa and other continents where elephants are in endangered species still kill for their ivory. Elephant ivory has been regulated since 1976, which isn't that long ago. I was 16 in 1976. Selling African ivory, ivory has been prohibited since 1989, which isn't that long ago. When it says 19th century, what years are that? 1800s. It's always 100 years previous. So 1800s and 1900s, Scrimshaw, Scrimshaw crafted before 1989 or before 1973 is legal. It is prohibited after those years for commercial import in the U.S. So it's not that long ago that it became illegal. And what happened was the whalers, at first they could find whales closer to the shore. But the more they killed them, the farther out they had to go to find them. On the back. Additionally, walrus tusks bearing the Alaska State Walrus Ivory Registration Tag and post-law wal walrus ivory that has been carved or scrimshawed by a native Alaskan Indian, which who we call Eskimos, is legally available. Eskimos still kill whales, and they're allowed to under some agreement because they use it to live. I think there's a limit to how many, but they are allowed to kill them. Finally, any ivory considered ancient, such as 10,000 to 40,000 year old mammoth ivory, is completely unrestricted in its sale or possession. So anything that's old can be sold and resold without any worry of being arrested. If it's past these dates, the 1976 and the 1989 dates, then it's illegal. Scrimshanders and collectors acquire legal whale teeth and marine tusks through estate sales, auctions, and antique dealers. I even read somewhere, have you ever heard of somebody playing the piano as tickling the ivories? The white keys on, on old pianos used to be made of real ivory. And they sell those on eBay, like piano keys and stuff, to people who do scrimshaw. To avoid illegal ivory, collectors and artists check provenance and deal only with other established and reputable dealers. Provenance means that you can prove that it's legal. Scrimshaw that is found to have been illegally sourced may be seized by the limited channels through which collectible scrimshaw passes and serves as a check on an unscrupulous person. It's like fine art. If you steal a famous painting, who are you going to sell it to without getting in trouble? Think about it. Usually when a famous work of art is stolen, it doesn't resurface until 50 to 75 years after it was stolen because that's how long they wait before they, they're not afraid to get caught. 
So, as with other fine art forms, it's usually possible for experienced museums, auction houses, or other experts to perceive a fake. Scrimshaw is being created today, still using fossilized ivories, recycled teeth, bones, plastic, and more. Some are done by hand, and many are done by laser programmed machines. And I read somewhere when I was reading about this, a lot of modern scrimshanders use dental tools to do their carving because they're very fine. It's good for teeth, I guess, and teeth, ivory, and it's the same. Yep. So, modern scrimshaw. While scrimshaw is rarely done on shale bone these days, it should maybe it should be whale bone, huh? It is still practiced by a few artists. Common modern materials are micarta, ivory, hippo tusk, warthog ivory, buffalo horn, giraffe bone, mother of pearl, and camel bone. And in the Civil War, they used ram horns, and they turned them into gunpowder, things to hold their gunpowder and they would scrimshaw on them. Uh, nowadays, if you buy a knife, a lot of times the handle will be scrimshawed. Uh, there are guns where the, the long part of a rifle is scrimshawed. Um, you've seen it more than you realize. Now, the words that you may not have known we talked about free, free time. We talked about anonymous being unknown. Etched is engraved. If something is sanctioned, it's authorized or approved. A poacher is somebody who hunts on somebody else's land without a permit or any right to. Prohibited means forbidden. Provenance, the place of origin or earliest known history of something. Unscrupulous. If you're an unscrupulous person, you don't care about right or wrong. Micarta is man-made materials that can be etched into or carved into and then a scrim shander. So we are going to study a whaling ship named the Essex, E-S-S-E-X. -S -S -E Did you study the Donner Party with Miss Mallon? The Essex is a story of the Donner Party on water. Oh. Wow. And it was the inspiration for the book Moby Dick. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. Well, I guess this time today it's stranded, like on a wagon, it's stranded on at sea. Right. So it's sort of gross, but it's true. And it was in the 18, late 1800s. So in in the history timeline it's not that long ago page four this is your assignment for the rest of the period put your name and section you're going to end up tearing this out so if you want to tear it out now you can write a paragraph on this paper summarizing what you have just learned about scrimshaw your paragraph should be at least five sentences cite text where is the text? The text is what we just read. Use good grammar and punctuation. It should be published worthy. Start your beginning sentence with the central idea of this reading. So you're going to indent. You're going to write an introductory sentence. You're going to write three complete sentences citing text from the reading. And then a concluding sentence, which is a restatement of the introductory sentence and your words should be spelled correctly because all those weird words you're not used to are spelled in the vocab word and in the reading. Five sentences. I don't want a book. I don't have time to sit there and read the front and back of something you've written. Five sentences. Perfect, punctuated sentences. Indented. When you're done, you may turn it in, and that's the end of our class for today.